Okay, this sermon's on the blood of Jesus Christ. Um, as requested, I'm going to do a sermon on this. Let's just go ahead and um, let's turn over to the book of Leviticus. Dear God, thank you for allowing me to preach this sermon. I just pray that you allow us to understand just exactly what the blood of Jesus Christ is all about. And why it's so important that we understand that his blood was uh, precious blood shed for us, which promises us eternal life in heaven. Keep us safe and bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Leviticus chapter 16, verse 30. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you, to cleanse you, that ye may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. So the, the atonement entailed the sacrificing of, you know, of a goat. In verse 22. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. So, of course, a, a blood sacrifice offering had to be made. And that's why, I turn over to the next chapter, verse 17, look at, ver, I mean, excuse me, chapter 17, look at verse 4. And bringeth it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, to offer an offering unto the Lord before the tabernacle of the Lord. Blood shall be imputed unto that man. He shall shed blood, and that man shall be cut off from among his people. We're talking about Christ now. Look at verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Now turn over to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9, look at verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to, to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, there we go, the blood, the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So it's the blood of Christ that saves us, not our own, not our own works, not our own, you know, merit, but the blood of Christ itself. Now let's turn uh, back. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter number, Hebrews chapter number ten. It says in verse uh, nineteen, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Okay, well I left that one. Back it up to chapter nine. Look at verse um, twenty-two. It says, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. So God, Jesus Christ, had to shed his blood. Now there are people out there that deny the blood, like John MacArthur denies the blood. And he's a false prophet, heretic straight out of the pits of hell, and we need to avoid him and, and mark him like it says in Romans chapter 16. He's a false prophet, and you've got to watch out for these people that say, the blood was not necessary. What the, what the Bible says, without the, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission you know, of sin. Okay? There's all sorts of verses on the blood here. Now let's, go, let's look at some verses um, in, in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 5. Yeah, that's why I like songs about the blood. I like hymns that talk about the blood of Jesus. I like that song that goes, The blood of Jesus washes me. That's a great song. Okay, let's, let's, let's read some more verses that talk about the blood. Romans chapter 9, excuse me, Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Okay, much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Okay, we're justified by his blood. When he died on the cross for our sins, he shed his blood to save us. We're sinners, he's the Savior. And it's the very shedding of blood that guarantees our eternal our, our eternal salvation and the thing is you know his blood was already shed once it was already shed for us so eternal life is already provided and a lot of people don't get this they're saved because of what Jesus did for them they're not saved by, by, by anything that they do or don't do or fail to do now turn over to let's just look at some of the verses in Galatians in Ephesians that talk about the blood turn to Ephesians chapter 1 Ephesians chapter 1, and, and let's take a look at a few verses here. 
that's what the whole communion is about. You know, the body. The, we're going to look at a verse in the communion. We're going to look at a communion verse here since we're on this subject. A communion is is is, is rep it represents the blood. It's symbolic. You know, I don't believe in transubstantiation. I believe it's all symbolism. Transubstantiation is the idea that that Jesus Christ actually becomes, you know, the the uh, the bread, and then his blood, and that's and then it's his, his real. It's his blood. But it's 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 a it's a symbol of his blood. Ephesians chapter one verse seven, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Redemption through his blood. Now turn over to Colossians. Colossians chapter two, and look at verse thirteen. Actually, let's look at um. Actually, this is not the verse I'm, I'm thinking of. Go back to Colossians chapter 1 and look at verse 14. The, the, we'll, we can look at that verse as well, but the verse 14 of chapter 1, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now go to, go to chapter uh, 2. Verse 13 is very important because I want people to know that all our sins were paid for by the blood of Jesus. Not just some, not just past, all. Past, present, and future. It says in verse 14, Look, actually, verse 13, And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. All trespasses. Now, more verses on the blood. Okay, let's go back to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26 talks about the communion, the Lord's Supper. And the blood is mentioned here, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. Matthew chapter 26. Verse 26 reads, start off, let's just back up to verse uh, 24. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been, be it had been good for that man if he had n not been born. Okay? Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and brake it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many, for the remission of sins. There you go, his blood. Now, let's go back to the Old Testament. Let's, let's read some verses that talk about how we're, our, our sins were uh, washed away. Turn to uh, Psalm 32. Psalm 32. Let's just read the first few verses here. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, and whose iniquity and whose sin is covered. See, back in the Old Testament, they had their sins covered. In the New Testament, their sins were removed. The blood removed them because the old sacrifices back in the Old Testament system. Were, they were, had to be offered up more than once. But see, when Jesus Christ died, he died once unto sin. Romans 6.10 says, For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. So their sins were not only covered, but their sins were removed. Now, of course, the, the, the people in the Old Testament were saved the same way as the ones in the New Testament, by the blood of Jesus, you know, by faith in, alone in Christ alone. And... Um, that once the uh, once Jesus Christ actually died, all their sins were were covered are covered as well. Okay, so that that make, that makes it very clear. All of our sins are covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Now turn back, turn over to Isaiah chapter one. Another picture of of what the blood, you know, accomplished is in Isaiah chapter one. Now, I've heard some people mock this idea of the blood. They said, Are you, uh, well, I can't, I'm not even going to say the guy's name. The guy makes me sick. He's a, he's a false prophet. He's got a radio show. And he said that uh, there's not one verse in the Bible that, that proves that the blood actually washes away our sins. Well, I just gave you a, a, a ton of verses that prove it. But here's another one, if you, if you, if you want another, another verse that alludes to this. Isaiah 118, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. The blood of Jesus Christ has washed our, our sins completely away. Every last one of them is washed away. 
completely. White as snow. Now, First Peter. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. The precious blood of Christ. Okay, now, Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, and I'll close with this verse. And this talks about the blood of Jesus. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the king of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Now, that's what the Bible teaches. The sins of the, 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 sins of the whole world is covered by the blood. But only those that have faith in Christ actually receive this, this, this uh, salvation. And that's all I have. <clears throat> Because, I mean, just because Jesus died for a person does not mean it automatically applies to them. They have to believe. They have to receive by believing. So if a person rejects Christ, just keep saying, no, I don't believe it. You know, or, you know remains an atheist, whatever, whatever they are, they will not be saved until they believe. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. We, we must have faith to receive what Christ has done for us. Thy faith hath saved thee, you know, Luke 7.50 says. So... The Bible makes it very clear in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And the reason why this is true is because of the blood of Jesus that was shed for the sins of the world. That's all I have. Let me close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for allowing us to um, just have your word, which is full of verses on the blood. And, I, and I, didn't, I, didn't go to, I didn't touch on all of them. But I just thank you for this, this promise. And um, we need to get back to the old hymns that actually sing and, up, and uplift this, this doctrine of, of the blood of Jesus. Keep us safe. Bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.